Welcome to the universe in a seashell, the podcast dedicated to science, life, and girl power. I'm Kara Bartek, and I'm your host. I'm a PhD, an author, and I want to make this world a more equal and opportune place, one girl at a time. Fellow bug enthusiast, you are listening to the universe in a seashell. We are all things science, and currently, we are all things bugs because we are in the middle of our 10 part series on bugs. We have been covering all things creepy, crawly, ooey gooey, flying, crying, and speckled, heckled, jekyll, and freckled, right? Yes. Katie? Hey guys, that's that's Penny, my co-host, my, my four-year-old co-host, who joined us on the last episode to talk all things ladybugs, and she did such yes. an excellent job, I had no choice. Because there's yellow, like, ladybugs, too. But to invite her back. You see, you see how excellent she is? You remember all the colors, don't you, of the ladybugs? Yeah, you told me it, because they have to, like... Um, like if a bird swoops in and they find the color of the ladybug, I thought they were trying to hide. I thought they were trying to camouflage, but they weren't. Well, you know a lot about bugs, don't you? Yes. Now, the audience, they have not had a chance to really get to know you, Penny. So I think today it's appropriate, before we talk about our bug of the week, that we get to know you a little better. So I'd like to ask you a series of questions, just so our friends out there can really know who Penny is, at her heart and at her soul. What do you think, Pen? I know, but do you remember? No, wait a second. I, I, I can't tell. Was that an an ascent or descent on on that question? How do butterflies um vibe the winter? Now wait a second. I'm the one gonna be doing the questioning here. Number one, what is your favorite color? Turquoise. Turquoise. Okay, I like turquoise. I like turquoise. What is your favorite food? Chicken. Chicken. You like the the rotisserie chicken? From H-E-B? What flavor? Garlic. Garlic, okay, okay, okay. Now, what is your favorite candy? Candy canes. Okay, <laughs> candy canes. Now, what what exactly is your favorite holiday? Christmas and Halloween. Christmas and Halloween, okay. I can dig it, I can dig it. Now, do you prefer the objective or subjective view of reality? Subject. Okay, okay. I see. I see where you're coming from. I see where you're coming from. Um, do you believe that atoms are particles or clouds? Um, folks who are out there in listening land, that was a head shake, but it was also a head nod. So I, I can't quite exact. I, I, I think she's being very neutral. Penny, I think you're destined for a career in politics. You have the ability to really walk the line, don't you? I think, like, the black and the blue butterfly, I think it's a comet, a butterfly or something. Baxter knows a lot about butterflies. Well, you know what? I'm glad that you brought that up, because today we are going to be talking all things beautiful butterfly and I love butterflies do you love butterflies yeah one time a butterfly got on my shirt do you remember <gasps> you're kidding me really now did it come up and give you a butterfly kiss right on your nose it really gave me a butterfly kiss okay yeah, butterflies the are they're beautiful they're fascinating and one of the things that's most fascinating about them is their life cycles and we're going to be talking 
about that. But first, I just want to remind our friends out there, if you are listening and you aren't enjoying this podcast, please make sure that you subscribe or hit the notification button in whatever app you're listening to us in. Also, if you get a chance, please rate and review, or more importantly, tell your friends. Uh, This podcast is all about making this world a more equal and opportune place, one girl at a time, and we can't do that alone, can we, Penny? Yes. Oh, Pen- Penny's much more confident than I am. I, I kind of think we need our friends for that, right? Girl power? Girl power. Okay. I mean, butterfly power. Oh, butterfly power. You're right. Butterfly power. Let's blow it up. Blow it up. Butterfly power. And let's go. All things beautiful butterfly. Now, did you know that butterflies and moths are actually in the same class of insects? Yeah, they're related. Even though moths look so different than butterflies, they're in the order. Order? What is the order? Okay, so it's it's kind of a way to classify bugs. And they're, the, the order that they're in is something that's called Lepidoptera. And I kind of like what saying is, that word, Lepidoptera. Lepidoptera? What is a lepidoptera? So that's the scientific classification of both butterflies and moths. Let's say it three times fast. Lepidoptera, lepidoptera, lepidoptera. Okay, your turn. Lepidoptera, lepidoptera. You know, I feel like we could sing the opera version of that. Lepidoptera, lepidoptera. No? Okay. Penny's not impressed with my opera singing. Now, butterflies, they have a very unique body. And it's, that's kind of what we it's know. It's like butter. It starts with butter. Yeah, it starts with butter. Well, mm. they're, they're very easy to identify because how do you know a butterfly is a butterfly, Penny? Because they have wings. Yeah, beautiful wings. Now, what are, what are your favorite colors of butterflies. I heard you mention the black and blue ones. What else do you like? Um, the monarchs. Oh, yeah, the monarchs. Yeah, they're with the... so pretty. And there's so many of them, right? But I don't know what is that red butterfly with, like, the, with that blue. I don't know what is that one. Well, maybe we'll, we'll talk about it. Let's, let's, let's see oh, where that... our research takes okay. us. So we, we know that they have the very large scaly wings, but they also have six legs because that's basically what makes an insect an insect. And, six legs. And they walk, too. Yeah, they remember? do. Now, they have three very specific body parts. They have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. What is a thorax? So the thorax is kind of that little middle part on bugs. Oh. Okay. Now, the wings are attached to the thorax, but they also have a pair of antenna what or antennae. Th- oh, I see antennas on there. Yeah, those are those little things that kind of poke out of their head, kind of makes them look like a, a Martian or something, and they kind of wiggle, right? Like this? Right. But they also have a very unique eye. It's called a compound eye, which means there's little bitty like lenses it almost looks like there's a bunch of eyes on one single eye right yeah but it's just one it's just one well actually it's two two like we have two yeah and they also have an exoskeleton now exoskeleton i know exoskeletons like the bone part is like yeah, the bone part is like on the outside and and that's actually exactly what it means exo means external or on the outside and then skeleton means hard bones right yeah it's like we have hard bones yeah so our skeleton on us is on the inside but for a butterfly it's, it's on, the, on outside. the outside yeah it's kind of like buggy armor right yeah but what if we see a pink butterfly okay a pink butterfly would really rock now did you know that there's more than seventeen thousand? 500 recorded butterfly species. <gasps> now, I don't mean 17,000 butterflies themselves. I mean that's how many species of butterfly there are. Now, 
In the U.S. alone, there are 750 species of butterfly. What do you think about that, Penny? It's like, it's like. Okay, show, whole... can, can you show me 750 on your fingers? Okay, I believe that's five. Okay, now, now that's 10. That's 10. We're getting closer. We're getting, we're getting much closer. Now, here's what's really unique about butterflies. Now, a lot of insects do follow this, but butterflies have a very specific transformation, okay? What do they start out as, Penny? Do they start out as the beautiful, graceful flying insect that we know? Yes. Um, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. But we will find out the answer. And guess what? Because that's what we're all about, right? Is learning. So yeah. butterflies have a four-stage life cycle. Okay? Life cycle? <clears throat> that's right. So the adult butterflies, they lay eggs on a plant that a butterfly baby will love to eat. Okay? So for us, we had a lot of milkweed in our garden. Do you remember that? Yeah, and they love to eat it. Right. And it's good for them. So the little larvae that come out of the eggs, you know what they are? Um, yes, butterflies. They're caterpillars. Oh, caterpillars. Yeah, those Dendy little turnin. juicy worm-looking guys. And they, are, and they turn into butterflies. That's right. That's absolutely right. So what happens is the mom butterfly will lay the eggs on a plant that's super yummy. And once the little baby hatches and the caterpillar comes out, it will get out there and it will eat up that plant. Okay? Because they it, need energy, right? To they, turn into a butterfly? And, this, and, and it's good for them. Right. It is. It's super good for them. So, like I said, we used to have milkweed Can in I our tell front you garden. Mommy? And the monarchs. Oh, what are you going to tell I me? I read your research. Quit reading my research. This is my research. Hey, who's in charge of the podcast? It's just you. I'm, I'm in charge of the podcast. <laughs> I read it. You better quit too. reading all of my research. You're really stealing the show. I think you and Cece are going to take over the podcast, aren't you? Yes. Okay. So, like I was saying, we used to have these very specific type of plants in our front garden. And so the mommy monarch butterflies for us, because that's who was laying eggs out there, would come and they would put their eggs on the plants. And all of a sudden, all of the milkweed started disappearing. And we would look out there and there was a bunch of caterpillars munching. So they could turn in butterflies. That's right. Now, they grow very rapidly. Okay, and when they fully develop or pupate. Oh, this day I saw um a cattle like I saw like um like a little caterpillar hatching and it was a butterfly and I hold it and I just put it down because it to mama. See, you're getting ahead of me again. You and Cece, always getting ahead of me. So anyway, so as the caterpillar develops, or this very special word, word that's called pupate, they grow into something that looks like those hangy things on our front porch. Do you remember what those are called? Okay, so we call them... Chrysalis. Yes! High five! The chrysalis, yes. Um, sometimes they're called cocoons. Right? Oh, do you remember those like those like those stone fiends we make and we put like like that ba 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 I think you're reading my research. Okay? <laughs> now when when No, it colors station. Oh. It's like those it's like those fiends, it's like curd and it's and you dip them. Do you maybe you put them No, in let's let's talk about let's stuff? talk about what happens when the caterpillars go into their chrysalis or their little cocoons. What are they doing in there? Um being they want to be a butterfly. So they're changing, right? There and there's a very special word for that type of change. Do you remember what that word is? Um no. So they're going from a little chubby worm to a beautiful beautiful butterfly and that 
word is called metamorphosis. And see, this is why butterflies are very unique in the bug world, because they do something that a lot of bugs don't do. They go from kind of a chubby little creature that looks nothing like their adult stage into something very great and very beautiful, and it all happens but, inside of a cocoon. Um, I saw, I saw that tree, um, there's a cocoon on it. Okay. It might be a moth co- cocoon, because we have a lot of moths out no, here. No, 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 no. It's a butterfly. It's a okay. chrysalis. Okay. Well, anyway, so so once metamorphosis is complete or the change from caterpillar to butterfly, all of a sudden the butterfly will come out, right? And the cocoon opens and the butterfly has to pull their wings out. Yes. And the wings are a little bit wet, so what has to happen to the wings? Dry. Yeah, they've got to dry. Now, do you think that they can fly right away as soon as they get out of their chrysalis or their little cocoon? Absolutely not. You're right. You're right, Penny. She was shaking her head. Now, what's happening inside of the chrysalis, the butterfly is waiting to emerge um, with its wings around its body. It comes out of the case, and, and the butterfly's wings are all shriveled up, okay? And they're a little bit wet. Now, it's got to, in order to make sure that the wings are working, pump fluid into its, into the veins in the wings. Okay? So, the little wings have teeny tiny veins that need to fill up with fluid. Okay? And so, this usually takes a couple of hours. And they've got to kind of hang out, let that fluid get into their wings let their wings dry, and then the wings themselves have to harden. Yes, just so they can fly. And the birds are a part broke off when it was wet. That that would not be good. That would not be good. And that, they won't fly then. That's right. That's right. So it's a, it's a very delicate process. Now, unfortunately... And this was something that was pretty surprising in my research. An adult butterfly has a very short lifespan, only three to four weeks. Can you believe that? A butterfly only lives about three to four weeks. Now that's in the adult stage. Now the actual full life cycle from egg to caterpillar to the chrysalis can sometimes take anywhere between two yes. to eight months. If they die, they get in and the babies grow up, they could be a mama, and they could have more babies. That's right. That's what they're. That's what they're always trying to do is make sure that their that their offspring survive. Okay. Yes. Now you talked a little bit about monarch butterflies, right? Monarch butterflies. Um. 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 What What color are the monarchs? The uh, yellow and black. Yes. And white. And some orange. Okay, now what's very important about monarchs is they're migratory insects. Now, why do insects migrate? But something I've been waiting in research for more minutes. I've been reading you more research. You better quit reading my research. <laughs> um, now listen, why do those monarchs migrate what what do you think that they're trying to accomplish are they are they just wanting to visit their cousin freddy who lives in toronto what why are they why are they migrating it's kind of it's the same reason that birds migrate they migrate so they could get a home they're migrating to get away from the cold now here's here's the thing butterflies don't like the cold They're kind of like you. You don't like the cold, do you? Yeah, I like the hot. You like the hot? That's because you used to be a mermaid, right? Yeah. We got you from that pack of mermaids. Mermaids like hot water, right? And they love warm water, too. I mean, cold water, too. Now, but monarchs are the only insects that migrate an average of 2,500 miles to find a warmer climate. Now, a lot of times, 
monarchs can be affected by extreme weather events. Okay, drastic dips and spikes in the numbers of monarchs have been typically dependent upon the the crazy variations in weather. Whether it gets too hot or too cold, maybe there's a blizzard, maybe there's a hurricane. Those things have a tendency to affect the monarch's migration. What is a blizzard? A blizzard is a huge snowstorm. Now, you're, you're not used to those because you live in a part of Texas that we rarely see snow. So that's okay. Blizzards are kind of super cold. You wouldn't like those. It's like being in a giant snow cone that's moving really, really fast. Like, now, but listen, monarchs are not the only migratory butterfly. I thought they were migratory butterfly. But they just, they, they cover the most distance. But the other migratory butterflies are ones that are called the painted lady. Isn't that, isn't that a pretty name? There's another one called the American lady, the red admiral, the cloudless sulfur, skipper, sachem, question mark, clouded skipper, fiery skipper, morning cloak, and others also migrate. The blue ones? The blue ones are the ones you said? I'm not sure of those. Those are all varieties that are very new to me. I bet there's some blue ones in there that migrate. I bet so. Now, because I've seen the blue ones migrate. Now, did I saw them migrate sky really high. Now, did you know that butterflies' wings are actually transparent? Yes. <laughs> I better do research again. Because the butterfly's wings are actually covered by thousands of tiny scales. I know. Um, and so a scale is kind of like the thing that's on snakes, crocodiles, and also on your back when you don't put lotion on there. I feel like I Sometimes can't Penny gets a super scaly back, and she kind of looks like a crocodile. And I keep and telling I her, like put the lotion on your back. <laughs> and then she gets crocodile skin and wants to know why that is. <laughs> crocodile scales mean? So the... The butterfly wing is actually formed by, a, by tiny layers of chitin, okay? And it's a protein. It's the same protein that makes up an insect's exoskeleton. But these layers are so thin that you can see right through them. Now, as the butterfly ages, the scales fall off the wings, leaving spots of transparency where the chitin layer is exposed. But what happened to that? What happened, what happened to what? If the, like, the scales fall off. If the scales fall off. That's just a natural part of aging. Skin, skin falls off, scales fall off. But, of course, your scales don't seem to fall off. And Well, sometimes you itch them off, don't you? Okay. Now, what do you think butterflies taste with? Do you think that they taste with their tongues? They feet. <gasps> How did you know? You're, you are looking at my research. <laughs> So Penny already said it. Butterflies taste with their feet. They have taste receptors on their teeny tiny feet to help them find the plant that tastes super good to them. Like super sweet. Now the female butterfly lands on different plants drumming the leaves with her feet like, until the plant will release its juices. Like I seen one sip one of those. And it's like and it's really sweet. Now, once she identifies the right plant that she wants to be on, she will lay her eggs. Okay. And she will find food for her babies. This, and they will just taste with their little feet. And what if the tall ones and the babies could land on it? Well, here's the deal. So the butterflies will step on their food as well, and they use certain organs that sense dissolved sugars, so kind of like a fermented sugar. Like, like our... Because that, that's what they like to eat. Like that red flower and it's orange? Yeah, they yeah. love, yeah, and they love that, but they like it to be a little bit fermented, um, a little bit more... Um, sweeter? Yeah, and yummy. And that's sweeter, a little bit... 
more sweeter than the orange and the red. That, that jasmine. Well, we definitely see a lot of butterflies over there and bumblebees, don't we? Yeah, I saw a little butterfly sipping one of those. It was like, and I heard a mouth from it. I heard it like noise, and it was like snapping, and I heard it. So I went He's over there. He's got good there. ears. Real good ears. Now, did you know that butterflies live on an all-liquid diet? Yes. So that means no burgers. No burgers. No pizza. No pizza. No tamales. No tamales. No chips and queso. No chips and queso. Just flowers. Just flowers. Okay. So the adult butterflies only feed on liquid nectar. Now, their mouth parts are modified to enable them to drink but they cannot chew solid foods. They've got a little thing that kind of sticks out that's called the proboscis, okay? Yes, it's like... And it's like, it's kind of like a straw that sticks out. It's like... If, if you can't see, Penny is, is using her finger to be a, a butterfly little drinking straw. And it's going in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. Now... This little mouth part, the proboscis, it stays curled up under the butterfly's chin until it finds nectar or some other kind of liquid that it wants to drink. It's like, it's like. Yeah, it's flying. all curled up like a big giant curl under there. It's like, and it's like flying and if it finds a sweet, it's mostly, and it's mostly sweet and it is like. Yeah, so yeah, you're absolutely right. So it, it will go to where it wants to eat. Maybe it's a really good tasting flower or like a type of fruit. We, like we have like those flowers, it tastes like fruit and they smell like fruit. Yeah, so it gets there, it tastes with its feet and then all of a sudden it will send that proboscis, it will uncurl it, okay? And, and it goes sip. down, yep, and it sips like, like this. It's like... It's like now if they can't find a good tasting flower, they will drink sap. Okay. What is sap? So sap comes out of trees. It's it's kind of like um, the sticky stuff on the inside of like pine trees. Like I saw a pine tree. It was a little pine tree I saw. I bet it was cute. Yeah. And some of them will even like, if in, in a it very... It was like this long. Okay. Now, but if they can't find sap, they can't find flowers, they will even resort to sipping on decaying carrion. You know what that is? What is decaying carrion? So that's the stuff that vultures eat. That's like um, like a dead raccoon on the side of the road. Like yeah, Good. or maybe if um, a rabbit dies in the woods or a deer dies in the woods. And, you know, there's a lot of animals that like to come and eat that type of meat. Well, butterflies, if they're in a pinch, they will also go and sip on the liquid from that. I don't hate them dying animals. I know. It's, it's, very, it's very tough. But, you know, what? that's a part of nature. And so, and the good news is, is that dead flesh becomes a meal for somebody else. And it also replenishes the soil. It's kind of like the circle of life. Now, butterflies will also drink from mud puddles. Oh, do you remember we watch that China film we watch every day? Uh, yeah, that Chinese documentary, the yeah. uh, Wild China. Like the snake that swallowed up the bird. Yes, and we got sad, but snakes need to eat too, right? Yeah, but what if the snake eats Cece's head? That would be pretty bad. Cece kind of needs her head. Yes, too. Well, I can see. And, and where else, where, where, where would she and put she... her bows if she didn't have a head with no hair? How would she wear her bows to school? I don't know. You don't know? And how does she wear... And how does she put a head into a jumper? With yeah, her how bows? is she gonna wear a jumper with no head? That would really stink. It seems but it, but you know what? It would be a great Halloween costume. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. The headless schoolgirl. 
Now you're, okay, you're doing like Cece does. You're getting me off topic. <laughs> okay. Now, I already said that butterflies, they like to drink nectar. They're living on this all liquid diet, but did you know that they drink from mud puddles? Did you know that? Yeah. Okay, here's the deal. They can't just eat sugar. They also need minerals. Kind of like you need vitamins and minerals, wait, right? Wait, I hear something. What do you hear? I hear a butterfly jumping so it could, like, so it could find nectar. Nectar. Penny, you've got great ears, my friend. You've got fabulous ears. Okay? <laughs> so the butterflies will go down and drink out of a mud puddle to make sure that they're getting enough minerals and salts in their diet. Okay. Like that mud puddle, we like, I like into something. Yes, let's not talk about that. Because I, I'm, that is no stomping mud puddles. I now, like this, mud puddles. this behavior of drinking out of mud puddles is called puddling. What is a puddling? That's when you drink out of a mud puddle. Do I drink out of mud puddles? I hope you don't drink out of mud puddles. I don't drink out of mud puddles. Because as long as you're eating enough fruits and vegetables, you shouldn't need to drink out of a mud puddle. Mm -hmm. But butterflies need to. Why? Because they need minerals and nutrients, right? That's vitamins? Yeah, that's mud a puddles? butterfly's vitamins. Now, So I don't drink that? These, these are very important in I, reproduction. I drink water and I drink milk. To give me vitamins. And you drank root beer today. And that's bad for you? Yeah, you don't want to drink root beer every day. Why? Too much sugar. Oh, and that will make your tummy hurt? It will make your tummy hurt. Okay, uh, let's try to stay on topic, okay? So we're talking about A butterflies bird? drinking out of mud puddles. Now, what is that called when butterflies drink out of mud puddles? Um, because you have vitamins for them? Yeah, but what is it called? Remember, we called it a something very specific. I don't remember. Puddling. Puddling. Okay, and then you name the reason exactly why. why. Why do they drink out of those mud puddles? The reason why they drink out of mud puddles. Why do they drink? Why do they drink it? Because it's mumbling. No, that's, that's, that's the action is puddling. But why do they drink out of those mud puddles? <gasps> it has vitamins. That's right. It's not because it tastes right. good. It's because it's good vitamins and minerals, right? And salts. And is it good for butterflies? And, and, but, and, but they drink it out of the shell? Yep. Like now listen. We already talked about the fact that butterflies will go to extreme lengths to avoid the cold. But did you know why they avoid the cold? Um, yes. Okay, why do they avoid the cold? To give them, so, if they get cold, and and they won't hot, and they fly like that way, and to get hot, they get hot. Yeah, so but why, why don't they like the cold? Because they hate the cold. Well, here, here's the deal. Butterflies don't like the cold because they cannot fly when it's cold. Yes. The they, temperature has to be at least 85 degrees Fahrenheit for butterflies to fly. But, and that's too hot for me. Well, butterflies are cold-blooded animals, which means that they cannot regulate their own body temperature. So the air temperature makes a huge impact on their ability to fly. Now, if the temperature falls below 55 degrees Fahrenheit, butterflies become immobile. So a lot of times, we only see they butterflies die? in the spring they die in the and cold? in the summer. Well, they can't fly, so they can't get away from predators. Because what likes to eat butterflies? I don't know. Other insects, birds, fish. Fish love butterflies. They eat... Why fish like to eat butterflies? Now, cooler days. They could survive in cooler days, but they have to use the sunlight to really warm up their muscles and so they, so they basically sunbathe. Sunbathe like Papa? 
Yep. Pawpaw likes to sunbathe, doesn't he? And Bob likes to sunbathe. Bob does like to sunbathe. Now, here's another thing. Butterflies are nearsighted. They can see, but they can't see very well. And they can discriminate or they can see a lot of colors. Now, they can see basically in a range of 10 to 12 feet around them. And if it's in that range, their eyesight is very, very good. Now, if it goes beyond 10 to 12 feet, they can't really see and it gets pretty blurry. It's kind of like with Daddy. Daddy can see things really up close if he doesn't have his glasses on. But once something kind of gets far away, he can't see it that well. That's called he nearsighted. Can't see like now, but butterflies rely on their eyes for some of their most important tasks, like finding their mates and finding flowers, okay? Maybe. So they're using their eyes to see where the flowers are at. And the flowers, what kind of colors are they usually that butterflies like? Um, are, they, are they dull colors or are they bright colors? Bright colors. So what are your, some of your favorite bright, brightly colored flowers? What would you say, like orange? Um, like that bright turquoise flower. A bright turquoise flower? Or uh, pink? Do you like pink flowers? I like the bright turquoise flower. I just like bright turquoise. Oh, I like I like pink, purple, yellow. I especially do you like love sunflowers. Golden? Love golden flowers. Golden? I love golden flowers. They have golden petals. Now, like so... Like barely by that sparkle. Now... They've got that great eyesight that can see a lot of colors, but did you know that they can also see ultraviolet colors? And ultraviolet colors are actually invisible to our eye. So butterflies can see them, but we can't see them. How cool is that? Why they could see them? Because they're very special and they have very special eyes. And in fact, here's something that I did not know. Butterflies have ultraviolet markings on their wings to help them identify one another and locate potential mates. But what if, what if um, a butterfly sticks out the shell and, this, and that's a kiss kiss? And if they stick out the shawl on my cheek, is that a kiss kiss? You're getting off topic again. Let's talk, let's, let's hold the butterfly kisses till the end, okay? So the way that they, so it's kind of like the way that we can identify our friends because we know what their faces look like, what their hair looks like. Butterflies can see unique ultraviolet markings on other butterflies' wings. I, I think wish, that's pretty cool. I wish I did that. Now I was a butterfly, I'll land on his shoulder. Is that a promise? Now listen, flowers also have ultraviolet markings, and it acts basically as signals to all kinds of pollinators like bees, um, butterflies, any kind of insect that likes to pollinate. And once those ultraviolet markings get on there, it's kind of like it's saying, pollinate me, pollinate me, pollinate me. I'm ready to go. So I think that's pretty cool. I didn't, I didn't realize... The natural world world had so much ultraviolet color. I think that's pretty amazing. But I wish I was a butterfly and I land on Susie. And, but do you remember that long sleeve shirt? It has that cat. Yes. What What does that have to do with butterflies? Hmm. But what if you have the butterfly long sleeve shirt? Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. A long sleeve butterfly shirt. Yeah. Now listen to this. Did you know that butterflies use camouflage? To hide from predators? Absolutely. So we said that a lot of things like to eat butterflies. Birds, fish, lizards. I've seen Bob try to eat a butterfly one time. <laughs> he wasn't successful. That butterfly was flying really fast. <laughs> now, sometimes they use camouflage to blend into their surroundings, okay? But what if I fly high to the clouds when I 
was a butterfly. Well, let's let's talk about if you were a butterfly at the end. Now, so they can use their camouflage to blend in to their surroundings. But did you know that they could also go the opposite way and use very bright colors and patterns that announce their presence? Now, brightly colored insects tell predators something. And we talked about that during the ladybug thing. What did what did the ladybugs being really brightly colored tell birds and other things that wanted to eat ladybugs? Did it say that they tasted good or tasted bad? Good. No, it says that bad. they taste really bad. And in fact, they could have toxic chemicals in their body that would make them sick. And then the bird would taste the ladybug or the butterfly and go like this. Patooey! Ew! Gross! It tastes like a skunk fart. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay? So those brightly colored patterns on butterfly wings tell predators that they could be toxic. And then predators try to avoid them. And here's the really cool thing. Butterflies are so smart that they will actually pattern their wings after other toxic insects. So while the butterflies may not be toxic themselves, they pretend like they are. How cool is that? And they really are? They're not toxic. They just pretend that they are. And then the predators fly away from them. So I think we learned several things. Number one, when a butterfly changes from a little chubby caterpillar to a beautiful, yeah. graceful butterfly, what is that called? What is that process called? Do you remember? Mine. It's like metamorphosis right metamorphosis that's going to be on your spelling test so get ready okay i expect you to be able to spell that by the end of this week and they are in an order of insects called what come on you you got to know this one this one is a really cool word and i think we should say it a bunch of times what lepidoptera 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 okay now it's it's your turn. Now sing it. Lepidoptera. <laughs> lepidoptera, lepidoptera, lepidoptera. And they're also, they're, they're in the same classification as moths, okay? They also like to drink out of mud puddles. Is that correct? How do you... Now, why, why do they drink out of those mud puddles? Because it's muddy. And, but it, what, what does that mud do for them? Help them get vitamins. That's right. Now, what is it called when they drink out of mud puddles? Mudding. Puddling. Puddling. Okay, now what is it called when you jump into uh, a mud puddle? <laughs> it's called pennies in timeout. That's what it's called. Penny. Penny goes to timeout. Okay, now, um, what are some other cool facts that you learned? Like, what do butterflies taste with? What do they taste with? They taste bad. Well, we know that they, they, they try to say that they taste bad to hide from predators, but what, what, what part of their body do they use to taste flowers? Um, they feet. I thought that was pretty cool. I'm going to try to taste things with my, my feet. I think I'm going to put um, a peanut butter sandwich on the ground. It tastes like your feet. Do you think it'll work? Now, and here's, here's the last thing that I think is a really big take home, is that camouflage can go two ways. Butterflies could try to use camouflage to blend in with their surroundings, and they could also use camouflage to repel predators and basically tell them, stay away from me because I could taste like a skunk fart. Right? It's a bully taste like a skunk fart. Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you'll have to test it out. But anyway, I appreciate I'm not tasting you a fried butterfly. I hope you don't taste a fried butterfly. I'd feel so sad. I'd feel so sad if we fried up a butterfly. But anyway, did you have fun discussing butterflies, Penny? Yes. Like Minox and stuff. Okay. So I appreciate all of you guys tuning in. Remember, 
we've got a lot of people that are playing bug bingo, especially one family who's really killing it. It's the Petersons. They have been collecting so many Mommy. amazing pictures of bugs. I am just impressed. I think they're actually going to get a blackout on bug bingo. And remember, if you want to play bug bingo, head on over to my Facebook page. Um, share my video. Tag three of your friends. And then I will send you your very own bug bingo board. And that will not only let you play bug bingo with us, which is super fun, but it will also get you into the drawing for a bug collecting kit. Okay, Penny's over here are bugging me. What What do you want to say that's so important? Oh my gosh, you don't want to say anything. You just want to bug me, don't you? No. Okay, Penny, tell everybody, ah, tell everybody thank you so much for listening. Thank you, please, Ava listening to this podcast every day you guys take care and have a wonderful week girl power say butterfly power butterfly power high five